two officers, members, visitors, friends, um, worldwide, um, statewide, locally, you know, city. I greet you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and in the name of Egyptian Life Evangelism at Yahoo.com. Amen. And I just want to bid adieu to the General Missionary Baptist Convention. A D E U E. A D U E. Adieu. Like, hello, goodbye. Like that. So I, uh, I do 2.0. So thank you all. Thank you to the General Missionary Baptist Convention. Amen. Thank you. To the world, to people worldwide. Amen. Um, if you would turn with me, please. Uh, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, I, I don't want to hold you long because, like I usually say, the longer it takes me to do this video, the longer it takes me to upload. And I kind of don't want to take, you know, too much, you know, more, more time than I need to. Amen. Amen. So if you would turn with me to a specific Bible biblical scripture. Amen. And um, the scripture is coming from the Holy Bible. Amen. Um, I, if you would ask me when it comes to this channel, I would say that I represent and I hold as like as equal and am ready to dove in to the Holy Bible, which is for like Christians and also the Quran. Uh, yeah, um, I, you know, I don't know what they believe when it comes to the Quran, but I, you know, it's kind of, kind of like, I wonder what it, I just cannot, you know, it just, it's just endless about what it says, and I, I cannot just kind of bear to just sit down and, and read it. Now, if it was read to me, you know, I listen to it, but it is what it is, but, you know, me particularly, you know what I'm saying? I say hello, and I'm very respectful to uh, Christians um, as well as those who are uh, Baptists and those who uh, are uh, Catholics. And I don't know a lot about, like, American Catholics, but I can talk to you about European Catholic, amen, and European Catholicism, so, the and, and the scrolls and, and, and what they say and talk about, so I represent for that, amen, amen, and so, uh, shout out to Italy and England with that as well as the rest of that and even Ireland, but if you would turn with me to a specific a scripture and the, the scripture that I want to Try to turn with me to is John the first chapter, and I'm gonna be reading verses one through four. Amen. But for expedited purposes, um, we need the main verse, and the main verse will be the third verse. Amen. And this is a sermon, the sermon, sermon outline for evangelism that I have shown and or uh, talked about and or delivered and or presented before. Amen. Amen. And so, um, yes, um, yeah. And preach from before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, talk to me before. So, I want to go ahead and go to I want to go I want to go to the scripture, the scriptures of John and I don't want to kind of, I don't want to um, uh, offend anybody. So I will say it the way I was taught. Like I was taught when we talk about John, it was John the Baptist. Amen. Uh, one, because of he was sent of God. He baptized Jesus and like, like two, 
because um, of his title, you know. Um, yeah, I am not. I am unable to unstrap the sandals of whom I'm. What is whom I'm seeing? Or the standards, the sandals of whom is above? Something like that. Um. <sighs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically, John the Baptist uh, was among Jesus, and Jesus, uh, John the Baptist was like, I'm unable to wash your feet because I'm unworthy. Unworthy. Okay, so if you want, if you really want to know, like the scripture, I found it. So, um, there are two, there are two mentions here. Um, one is in Luke 3.16, but the other one, the one I'm going to concentrate on, the one I want to reference to is John 1.27. So I don't want y'all to like, so if I say something, I want y'all to be able to, be able to reference it yourself. So John one. We was already like in the first verse, so we can go ahead and look at that really quick. So I so I can read this for y'all. Um, it says this: He he it is who come after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. But I I, I, I want to concentrate on something else. Amen? Amen. Uh, we're going to concentrate on the same chapter, um, but a different verse. Somebody say, same chapter, different verse. All right. Same chapter, different verse. So, John, the first chapter, the first through the fourth verse. But for time's sake, I'm going to read the third and the fourth verse. Amen? But we're going to be mainly concentrate on the... Third verse, amen? Amen, it says this. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. If I could, I just want to use it for a title. Just for a few minutes. Made without an expiration date. Like Parmesan cheese. Made without an expiration date, like Parmesan cheese. I don't know if y'all know what an expiration date is, but basically, if you if you say, you know, I want to uh, be a part of the retail realm, right? And I got this great thing I want to give people or sell people or sample people. Like, um, oh, I got this pie. That's just great. That thing goes so hard. People love it. I want, people, I want to share it with people. Doesn't matter if you want to sell it. Don't sell it. Don't matter if you just want to give it away. When you put it in the package, usually uh, the government wants you to put a, a expiration date on it. Meaning like, when is it that between uh, making it, putting it on the shelf... Or in the closet, or in the cupboard, and to somebody opening it, will it rot or go bad? Amen. And so, basically, that's how it is. That's what the expiration date is. You can look up to, you can look up a full expiration date in the FDA and all that kind of stuff, improvement, whatever. But that's basically what it is. So, basically, the the title to this outline is made without an expiration date. Like Parmesan cheese. I chose Parmesan cheese because, amen, uh, I thought it was kind of simple to explain. I don't know if you all know this or not, but when Parmesan cheese is made, um, one of the last things they do uh, but, but before they call it a night, so to speak, 
is they make sure everything is wrapped in like a, I, you could, I, I would say a cloth, but not, it's not like a it's not like a cloth, but it's mainly like um, like a outer skin, and it's kind of fibrous and almost woody, and so that whole thing surrounds the outside of the, the, the perimeter in a way of the cheese. Some people eat it, some people don't. Some people put it in stock stews and different stuff like that. But that's not the point. The point is. Real Parmesan cheese has that. And not only that, amen, but real Parmesan cheese roughly has no expiration date. As long as it, as long as you be like, okay, um, Parmesan cheese is stored in storage uh, rooms. Meaning, like, they put them on shelves in a certain degree in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And if you keep that cheese at that temperature, it will last forever. Amen? Amen. And so, but, but if you put it in refrigerated, more than likely it'll go bad. But if you leave it in that specific, mm, it's going to last forever. Mm, amen. And roughly the only other thing that I could think that could last Forever like that would be heirloom heirloom tomatoes because they last fifty years, few hundred years, stuff like that. But um, but that's the point that I'm trying to make here. And biblically speaking, like spiritually speaking, it's like this. All right, and I got these points that I'm gonna make. Okay, but uh, I want to give y'all some background and some introduction. But it goes like this. In the Bible, it talks about the creation from God. In the book of John, it picks up by saying, In the beginning was the word, and so forth. The teachings in John hinder us about the coming of Jesus. They warn us about the coming of Jesus. They tell us about the, com the coming of Jesus and baptism. The sermon, this sermon, should help us stand on the promises of God. It is important to count on the following. God, our Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the ultimate peace with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, the three points, the, the main, the, not the, the points that I want to make is this. The first point is this. There is a limit to physical life. So, what you do is if you are like a saved person, or if you strive to be saved, what you try to talk to other people about it is the fact that if they're not saved, you tell them, you talk to them about it. And if they are saved, you kind of remind them that this physical life more than likely won't last. And I can't say for it's like, you know, technically it's not supposed to, but, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but. Power can be shifted to the left or to the right. You know, from back when it was Adam and Eve and the serpent and all the other kind of stuff to the government, how it shifts. And so, even though God says and Jesus said, in my father's house would be in the mansions, if it, wasn't that shouldn't, if it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. I am the way. I go to prepare a place for you. He might. But it might not get there. I know people might say God all powerful and stuff like that. But let me tell you something. It's not about God. It's like this. Have you ever had a cell phone? Um, you ever had a cell phone and don't no matter what kind it is, no matter if it's a flip phone, smartphone, all that other kind of stuff. One of the things about a cell phone is it has to be charged periodically or else you can't use it. 
My thing, what I'm telling you all, is if there's not enough charge when it comes to the spiritual oomph, it's not going to happen. God would not be in control. I can't say whether or not, you know, one master's better than the other one. Because sometimes, hey, the devil seems kind of better. Because it helps more. The devil helps more than God. Sometimes it might feel that I might feel that Jesus would be better off without God because Jesus was down here. He knows about struggle. He knows about pain. He knows about drugs, alcohol, sex, rock and roll. He knows about all that kind of stuff. He knows about success, failure, storms, turmoil, all that. God don't know about that. You can talk to God all teeth in the blue in the face. But Jesus, he know. And why does he know? Because I was told a long time ago that he came down. And I kind of believe that because of how life is and science and what people have discovered and this, that, the other. So, I'm just telling you how it is. So, the first one is this. There is a limit to physical life. So, God... From God's perspective, he's saying, hey, there's a limit to life. But the second point is this. There is no limit to spiritual life. God wants you from one to the other one. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever been uh, skiing or walking or running? Then you go from this side to this side or this side to this side. Mainly this side to that side. And so that's what God is saying. He's saying, I want to switch you from just being physical to spiritual, but I want you to know that one day is it, it's not going to be like this always. It should be a better place, and one day you'll worship me 24-7 in heaven. But think about that. I'm going to be honest person. Who wants to worship somebody 24-7 in heaven? Think about it. Church all day. I, I'm not hearing people who be like, Hey, but who going to church all day? You know, out of all your life, out of all your turmoil, storms, and this and the other, you expected to go to church all day. For what? I'm not hating on God, but hey, you started this. God started this, not me. It's your fault. And yet, yeah, you want me to clean up your mess? And how is it God's fault? It's God's fault because, in my opinion, I was taught and how I know is that a long time ago, God was in heaven. You know, a long time ago, God was in his heaven and everybody else was in their heaven. And he decided to make earth. And then that's when all the stuff started to go to hell. And then so he put people on earth. And where are people... Before they was on earth, heaven or hell. I'm just saying, just think about it. So next, all things were made. Look at the scripture. It says all things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. <sighs> okay, cool. Yeah. Let me keep going on with that. Which, that kind of backs, backed up my last point is then, hey, God caused all this, you know? Adam, Eve, the serpent, they, they shouldn't be ashamed of what happened. Or what. God did that. He should let everything right the way it was. You know, as, in my opinion, as if you are a creator or if you are in charge of something, in my opinion, you have a sixth sense about, like, what's going on. So, you he should have knew. He, he should have been like, you know what? Some name, right? I, I shouldn't do this right now. But yet, here we are. Uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, one. So next, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next is, he does not want you to exasperate his people. 
make nervous. So he does not want to exasperate his people or make them nervous. And I'm talking about on a physical standpoint. I don't know about the spiritual. It is what it is. It had turmoil, trouble, storms, spiritually, whatever. I can't. But what I'm talk, talking to you about first is physical. And if you don't know what exasperate me, uh, there's a, the, it, there is a, um, what you call? Uh, um, uh, diagnoses or a, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What it says about this is it's a verb and it says irritate and frustration. Someone is intensely. This Foot file process expirates prison officials. I don't know what that is. Man, look, basically, to exasperate is when you start breathing and, and getting nervous and you're getting scared. You don't know what's going on or how it's going on. This, that, the other. That's what that means. But, um, yeah. And so, uh, that's your sermon. That's your sermon. Yeah. Made without an expiration date by Parmesan cheese.